But today, the NDP suggested it doesn't have to be. Speaking in question period, NDP MP Tracy Ramsey said negotiators uh, excuse me, <clears throat> should ditch that chapter altogether. It's known as the Investor State Dispute Settlement System, and it allows companies to sue governments for actions that hurt their businesses. A recent report found the provision has cost Canadian taxpayers big time, $314 million since the trade deal was enacted in 1994. So what does Canada gain from Chapter 11, and will the government fight to save it? Joining me now from the foyer of the House of Commons is the Parliamentary Secretary for Canada-U.S. Relations, Andrew Leslie, the Conservative trade critic, Dean Allison, and the NDP trade critic, Tracy Ramsey. Very glad that you are all able to join us. Uh, Tracy Ramsey, you sort of made the running on this today. The NDP wants to scrap Chapter 11, which allows investors to sue a government under NAFTA. So why get rid of it? What's your case? Well, first of all, this is something that the U.S. is asking to be able to opt out of. But they still want their companies to be able to sue us under these provisions. Um, but, you know, the overarching thing here is 41 cases have been brought against Canada. We are the most sued country in the world under this provision. We've paid out an incredible amount of taxpayer money, as you highlighted earlier. And to be honest, the Liberals, when they were in opposition, opposed this as well. This has not worked well for Canada. This could be perceived as a win if we say to the U.S., we're willing to get rid of Chapter 11. And then we will settle our cases in domestic courts. And I know that there's a concern with domestic courts going into Mexico and into the U.S., but at the end of the day, we're giving up an incredible amount of our sovereignty. And I'll tell you that 19 of the 41 cases that have been brought against us were around environmental provisions. And this goes right down to the municipal level, although it's always brought to the federal level to be uh, resolved, and we ultimately end up paying for this as taxpayers. But it's not the money alone. It really is about the impact and the ability of uh, ourselves at the federal level but every level of government to implement public policy that is in the interest of Canadians around protecting our environment. I can't think of something more top of mind for Canadians than dealing with climate change and if we're going to tie our hands in doing so then we need to question why. And the U.S. right now, uh, the proposal that they've put on the table, I think we should be accepting and saying that Chapter 11 is now dissolved and that we will take our disputes to our domestic court systems as we should. Andrew Leslie, what's the government's answer to that? Well, first and foremost, we've consulted widely with a variety of Canadian businesses. And what the current Chapter 11 does is gives a certain degree of certainty, predictability, and a regulatory framework in which disputes can attempt to be resolved. Let's talk about the numbers for a second, Terry. So $340 million over 25 years in a trade relationship that's currently clocking about $650 billion a year. Is this a lot of money to individual firms? Absolutely. In the sweep of 25 years and multiple trillions, Second point, 41 cases over 25 years. We're averaging about two cases a year. We've tripled so, cases in the last, uh, under the last decade. The point being, discussions are underway with Mexico and the United States. Obviously, I'm not going to go into details. I spent a great portion of last week at the NAFTA negotiations in Montreal, and I think our team's doing a fantastic job. We're working our way through this. Progress is slow, but progress is being made, and we've got some good ideas on the table to modify Chapter 11. And this issue of sovereignty, don't forget that Canada, United States, and Mexico all are agreeing on certain aspects of Chapter 11 as articulated, and it's a give, give, give to create the win-win-win. Dean Allison, what's the Conservatives stand on this? No, I think we, we've always supported this. Uh, we believe it brings certainty. Certainly, if there's an opportunity to improve it, we're not opposed to that at all. But I think when you start looking at, like, you know, I know we're talking about Chapter 11, with Chapter 19, uh, we need an uh, independent uh, way to resolve disputes. And, you know, what happens if our, our, our companies go to other countries and make investment decisions, large investment decisions around the laws of the land, and then things change? Uh, you know, there's, there needs to be a remedy for them to be able to, uh, based on the investment, based on the level of certainty. And I think this creates a, a, an opportunity, as, as, uh, as General Leslie said, you know, at the end of the day, this, this is $300 million is a lot of money. But over the course of the relationship over 25 years, it really amounts to a small amount. But quite frankly, we need this opportunity for our companies as they look at other countries. Tracy Ramsey, I'd like you to respond to the, the, the notion that, that both your colleagues have raised that, you know, we're, we're not the only ones giving up some sovereignty. I mean, we, we have a lot of businesses, Canadian businesses, investing, for example, in Mexico, do we not? Uh, we have our doubts about the fairness of the Mexican judicial system. Uh, why would you want to remove the protections that Canadian businesses have in Mexico by getting rid 
of Chapter 11. It's something that serves us. It's not all about other countries suing us in, in Canada. It's about we might want to sue in Mexico, and we might it's, need an independent panel. It's not working well for us, Terry. It's not working well for Canadian businesses. Uh, you know, we, the U.S. has never lost a case, by the way, that's been brought. And this is just simply not working for Canadian businesses. And I think it's false to say that the investment that has come out of NAFTA is because somehow of Chapter 11, because of the existence of this chapter. That's a false premise. There's nothing to back that up. There's nothing that says that's the case. And as for the money and the amount of cases, there's a dangerous trend that's happening. The number of cases is increasing. The number, uh, the amount that they're asking for rewards is increasing. Uh, the reasons why they're bringing it forward are starting to become more aggressive. If we look at on the tracks right now, uh, up in the port of Churchill, we have on the tracks who came in, a foreign company came in to lay down the track, received an incredible amount of government subsidy to maintain that track, and is now turning around and suing the Canadian government because of the dismantling of the Canadian wheat board and because of the refusal of Transport Canada to allow oil to be transported on that track. So what we have is corporations having an incredible amount of power over our public policy with no strings attached, by the way. So okay. corporations can bring these cases forward. They can attach some you know, number that they view as being for their uh, future profits that they kind of pull out of thin air. And this is not working well for Canadians. Andrew I Leslie? hear that they're representing so. corporations. I'm here to talk about Canadians and the tens of thousands of Canadians that have contacted the government right. on this. So they're well aware. I, I, I want Andrew it. Leslie to have a chance to respond. Go ahead, sir. So, Terry, think of NAFTA as the intersection point between three sovereign systems, Canadian, Mexican, and American. Each of them have their own complexities. By the way, without Chapter 11, As we corporations would still sue sovereign governments if they feel their rights have been infringed yeah. upon or, in essence, uh, they're not getting the fair deal that they thought they were signing up to. And let's not forget that in most societies, governments issue the large majority of the major contracts, especially for things like construction, bridges, waterways, and the list goes on. So. Chapter 11 is yet another step in a regulatory framework which brings the three nations closer together and allows certainty and a degree of predictability and behavior from the various corporations and the sovereign states, in this case Canada, with which essentially to conduct business with foreign companies. We've suggested some common sense modifications. The United States and Mexico are studying them very closely. And it's too soon to say what the final decision will be, but I suspect uh, some of the good work of our superb negotiators will shine to the fore in the rewrite. Dean Allison, you're broadly aligned, uh, obviously, with the government on this issue, but what do you say to Tracy Ramsey's point that we, 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 well, more than off, we're very often on the losing end of this? Well, I think that, uh, you know, I go back to, you know, some of the changes the U.S. want to make with this NAFTA deal. And I think that, you know, it's, it's kind of like, well, let's, let's make sure that, you know, five years out, we have to renegotiate a deal. That doesn't make sense. But reviewing things, so, uh, you know, maybe to Tracy's point, part of the suggestion would be that every five years we review this Chapter 11 to make sure that it's still working. Uh, you know, if more things are coming or, or, or people think there's frivolous cases that are starting to happen, mm -hmm. then maybe we can have that conversation. But I think I investors want some type of certainty. Uh, and as, uh, as the general said, you know, there's, there's no question that people are still going to bring cases forward that's going to happen. So we look at Chapter 19. We look at Chapter 11. We look at these chapters. These are uh, one ways to try and create a little bit of certainty and uh, have Canadian companies understand what their options are when they go into these trade agreements. And, and, the, and yes, maybe they're not all perfect. So why not have a mechanism that says every five years we'll, re we'll review it just like we'll review Chapter 19 and some of the other things that are contentious to the Americans. All right. I'm running a little short on time, but I want to have a last word from each of you, if I may, on the fact that yesterday... Uh, Christian Freeland, the minister, said that Canada would uh, happily let the U.S. out of Chapter 11, but not Mexico. Uh, and I want to know why uh, th we need Chapter 11 if the biggest partner, U.S., is allowed out of it. Uh, Andrew Leslie? It's a series of give and takes as we get to the, essentially the, um, the delicate portion of the negotiations. So there's hundreds and hundreds of items that have already been resolved or modified or upgraded. Because the, the, the original premise of the agreement is now 24 years old. So these are one of the things that we're considering. Keeping in mind, though, that most of the cases in the future, they look to the future, especially with differing laboring codes and laboring standards. And how does that affect the competitive edge? Might well be focused between the Mexican-Canadian relationship. But we're not sure yet. So very briefly, Tracy Ramsey, your response to that. If they're willing to let the U.S. out, would that satisfy you? 
No, I think that this is something that Canada needs to opt out of as well. India is doing this right now. They're going and removing it from every single trade agreement that they have. This is a conversation that's happening around the globe. And now that the Liberals have signed us on to the TPP, we actually have ISDS in TPP, unless that's been removed in some way. So Canada and Mexico will be under those provisions. The U.S. wants out. Let it out of the deal. We don't need it in this deal. And yeah. yesterday, Lighthizer made it very clear that he views Chapter 11 as a threat to American sovereignty. So why not give this one piece that has not worked well for Canada, and let's get on to other negotiations that are important. Okay, why and they not? still can sue in our domestic courts, by the way. Okay. I understand the need All for right. that. Sorry, I just want to give Dean a chance. I'm running out of time, and I want to give Dean a chance to respond. You get the last word, sir. Yeah, so no, I, I think it would be, from, my, from our perspective, I think it would be nice to see it stay uh, with, with the U.S. And, and with Mexico as well. And so, because we're not, we're not privy to what's actually going on around negotiations, uh, we realize that uh, there will be some things that... Uh, uh, as the Liberals are negotiating, they're trying to figure out and trying to get a good deal. But I, I'd like to see it stay with the U.S. and, and with Mexico. I want to thank you all for being brief in the answer to that question. Thanks, I know sir. you wanted to say much more, <laughs> and I cut you off, but politely. Thank you to Andrew Le Leslie, Dean Allison, and Tracy Ramsey. Good discussion. Thanks, thank, Thanks, you. thank you. Thank you. In Ontario, and it fixing.